Hi friends, in this video, we'll be looking at some important questions on electricity. We'll be looking at different types of sums and I'll show you some tips and techniques on how to solve the numericals so that you can do better in your exams. If you find this video useful, do hit the like button. And friends, sharing is caring. So do share the video with your friends. I have more quizzes and questions for you to practice on my website, manochaacademy.com. I'll put the link in the description below. So do check it out. All right, let's dive right into the questions. Let's take a look at this question. Find the ammeter reading in this circuit. Now, where's the ammeter? That's right, it's here. It has the symbol A. And what does the ammeter do? Correct, it measures the current. So we want to find the current flowing through this ammeter, which means the current flowing through this 3 ohm resistor. So can we apply Ohm's law? Can I say I equal to V by R? So let's call this the resistor R1. And the current passing through this resistor is I1, which is the current in the ammeter. So can I say I1 equals V by R and can I substitute 12 volts and 3 ohm and get the current as 4 ampere? No, that's wrong. You can't use this voltage. Why? Because Ohm's law can be applied to the entire circuit or to each part. So if you're applying it to this resistor R1, then we should write I1 equals V1 by R1, okay? V1 here by R1. Now what is V1? It's the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor. So it need not be the full voltage 12 volts. We know R1 is 3 ohm, that's simple, but we don't know what is V1, the voltage across R1. Now how do we find that out? So the best thing to do is, since we have three resistors here, R1, R2, and R3, the first thing you should do is find the equivalent resistance or the total resistance of these three resistors. And how do we do that? As you can see, these two resistors are in parallel. So let's collapse them and find the parallel resistance. For that, we can use the parallel formula. One by RP, equals 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2, right? And let's substitute the values. So it's going to be 1 by 3 plus 1 by 6. And if you take the LCM, we have 1. So there we have half. But remember, this is 1 by RP. So therefore, RP, the parallel resistance, is going to be the reciprocal, which is 2 ohm. So this equivalent resistance of this parallel 3 ohm and 6 ohm is 2 ohm. And now this parallel combination is in series with this 1 ohm resistor. So what is the total resistance going to be? So the total equivalent resistance is going to be 2 ohm plus 1 ohm, because in series you add the resistances, right? So we have the total equivalent resistance is 3 ohm. Is that right? Now how does that help us? Because now we can use the Ohm's law formula, I equal to V by R. So let me write that here, where I is going to be the current in the main circuit. So that's the main current and we can find that. Now I can use the 12 volt, the total voltage here and the equivalent resistance. So this is, I'm using R equivalent, which is 3 ohm. So the total main current is 4 ampere. So now we know that, right? And we are interested in finding 
the current passing through the ammeter I1. So we know 4 amperes flowing through here and it's going to split into I1 and I2, right? But how do we find this current? So to find it, we need to know the voltage here. And again, we can apply Ohm's law because we are interested in the voltage V1. So you know in, uh, that 3 ohm and 6 ohm are in parallel. So the voltage V1 will be the same as the parallel voltage. So the voltage of this parallel combination, because in parallel, you know that both the resistances R1 and R2 have the same voltage, right? So basically, we need to find the parallel voltage here. The parallel voltage represents the voltage of this parallel combination, right? And here we'll apply Ohm's law because we know that V parallel is equal to I parallel into R parallel, right? I'm using Ohm's law here. Now, what is the parallel current flowing through this? It's going to be the main current I, right? So that's going to be 4 ampere and into the R parallel, which we had found out here, which was 2 ohms, correct? So what do we get? 4 into 2, here we have 8 volts. So the vo parallel voltage is 8 volts, which means the voltage across R1 will also be 8 volts, right? So now we can substitute here confidently that V1 is 8 volts and what is R1? That's given to us 3 ohm, okay? Just so let me draw this line here. And so what will I1 be? I1 is 8 by 3, which is equal to 2.666. So I'll round that off, 2.67 ampere. So the main concept here is that you can't just blindly apply Ohm's law V by R, you can't do 12 by 3. That was 4 ampere, which is, the, uh, which is not the current flowing through this I1. As you can see, it's lesser than 4 ampere. So to find it, we actually needed to find the potential difference or the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor, which was the same as this parallel voltage because this whole parallel combination here will get the parallel voltage, right? And so it's 8 volt by 3 ampere, which is 2.67 ampere. So that's going to be the reading in the ammeter. Now let's take a look at this question. A wire is stretched to three times its length. What is the change in resistance and resistivity? So the first important thing is to visualize the sum, right? So imagine you're stretching clay or Play-Doh, okay? So what happens? Let's try to draw it out. So let's say this is your original wire. Okay. And let's say it has the length L and area of cross section A. Now we are going to stretch this wire to three times its length, right? So what will happen? So the new wire is going to become three times longer, right? So I'm going to mark the length as 3L. And what about the area? So when you stretch Play-Doh, do you know, when the length increases, the area of cross section, that is the thickness, decreases. And since the volume has to stay constant, so if the length is 3L, what's the A going to be? Correct, it's going to be A by 3, right? Now we need to find what is the change in resistance, right? So let's say the resistance of this wire is R1, the original wire, and let's say the resistance of this wire is R2, okay? So we need to find the change, and the easiest way is to find it by finding the ratio. So we are interested in R2 by R1. How much is that, right? What formula do you think we need to use here? Correct. We need to apply the formula R equal to rho L by A. Remember, R is the resistance, rho is the resistivity, 
which is related to the material of the wire, L is the length and A is the area of cross section. Okay. So now let's substitute for R1 we have, R1 is going to be rho L by A, right? And what about R2? Okay, so it's pretty simple. R2 is going to be, and we are going to substitute again rho because the material hasn't changed here, right? And the length is going to be 3L. It stretched three times. And the area of cross section is going to be A by 3, right? Because the area is now one third. And so to find the change, we just need to find this ratio of R2 by R1. So we just need to substitute that here. So that's going to be rho 3L divided by A by 3 and this thing by rho L by A. And if you solve that, all the rows are going to cancel the L's, right, and area. And this 3 will go on top. So we'll get 9 is to 1. So basically 9. R2 by R1 is 9. So what is the new resistance of the wire? It's going to be, so if you just simplify this, we get R2 equals 9 times R1, right? Can you see that? Just R1 will go on top. So R2 is 9 times of R1. So the change in resistance is going to be 9 times. Now what about the change in resistivity? That's right, there's going to be no change. That's the trick question because the material hasn't changed. And can you see we use the same row. So the resistance has changed, but the resistivity of the wire does not change on stretching it. Now are you ready for this question? Let's take a look. Find the amount of heat produced in a coil of resistance 100 ohm if a current of 2 ampere is passed for 2 minutes. So what formula should we use here? Since we need to find the amount of heat produced, it's Joule's law of heating. So we need to use the formula H equal to I square RT. That's Joule's law of heating formula, right? So now let's start substituting the values. So it's pretty simple. Current is 2 ampere here, right? So it's going to be 2 square into the resistance, which is 100 ohm. So we'll multiply by that. And what's the time going to be? Two minutes? No, be careful here. What is the SI unit of time? It's seconds. So all the things here are in SI units. And so should time be also. So two minutes I need to do into 60, right? Because that's going to be two into 60 seconds. Now just multiply these numbers and find it. So that's 4 into 2, 8, 6 are 48, right? And three zeros in there. So the heat produced is 48,000. And what unit should I write here? That's right. The unit of heat energy is also going to be joules. We'll use the SI unit. So the heat produced is going to be 48,000 joules. Or you can also write it as 48 kilojoules. That's our answer. Okay, let's take a look at this question now. What is the power consumed by a 100 watt 220 volt bulb when it is connected to a 110 volt mains? So this is an interesting question because the bulb which was made for 220 volts is now connected to a lower voltage. So what do you think that's going to happen here? We know that the bulb will glow dimly, less bright, because the voltage is lower. But what is the power that's going to be consumed by the bulb? That's what's asked here, right? So is it going to be 100 by 250 watt because the voltage is halved? No, because when the voltage is decreased, the current in the bulb will also decrease. Both voltage and current change. So we are not sure what's the power going to be? Now what remains constant? That's right, the resistance of the bulb. Because once the bulb is made, 
its resistance is constant. So let's use the power formula P equal to V squared by R to solve this question. P is the power, V is the voltage or potential difference and R is the resistance. So let's calculate the resistance of the bulb. We can say the power is 100 watt and the voltage we've been, we've been given is 220 volts, right? So 220 square and we can find the resistance of our bulb. So if you work that out, the resistance is going to work out to be 22 square, which is 484 ohms. And we know that when the voltage changes, this resistance won't change. So now let's again use this formula P equal to V square by R at the lower voltage, right? So the voltage is now going to be 110 volts. So that's 110 square. And since our resistance doesn't change, I'm going to copy this value here, right? And if you solve that, you're going to get 25 watt, okay? So can you see the power is not half, it's actually one fourth. So in this sum, be careful, you need to use this formula V square by R because the resistance remains constant. Don't use P equal to VI. Don't use that formula. And as you can see, this is our answer that at 110 volts, the power consumed is 25 watts by the bulb. Now let's look at this long question. An office uses six bulbs of 25 watt each and two fans of 100 watt each for 10 hours a day. The office is open on all days. If the cost of electricity is rupees 5 per unit, what is the monthly expenditure on electricity? So how do we do this question? Now in this long question, let's see what do we need to find? The monthly expenditure on electricity. And how do we do that? We know that the bill is based on the amount of electrical energy consumed. So we basically need to find how much electrical energy is consumed and then we'll multiply by the cost of the electricity. So what's the basic formula? Remember, energy is power into time, right? So first let's find the energy consumed by the bulbs and the fans. So let's see what's the energy consumed by the bulbs here. It's going to be, we have six bulbs of 25 watt each, right? And they're working for 10 hours a day. So this is the energy by the bulbs and that's going to be 1500. And what's the unit? Watt R, because this was 10 hours. This is the energy consumed by the bulbs. And what is the energy consumed by the fans? We have two fans here of 100 watt each, right? And they're also working for 10 hours a day. So if you multiply all those numbers, how, how much are we going to get? It's going to be 2000 watt hour, right? Okay. So this is the energy consumed by the bulbs and the fans. So what is the total energy going to be? We just add them up and it's 3500 watt hour, right? Okay, so that's the amount of electrical energy consumed by the fans, fans and the bulbs. Okay, and that's the amount of energy consumed in one day, right? Now we need to find the total amount of energy for the month, right? But before we do that, we can simplify this so we can find the energy in kilowatt hour, right? So let's divide this number by 1000. And how much is it going to be? 3.5 kilowatt hour. 
So that's the energy consumed by the fans and bulbs in kilowatt hour. Okay. And now to find the amount of energy consumed in the month. So we can take one month is an average of 30 days. Okay. So the total energy is going to be in the month. So it's going to be 3.5 kilowatt hour into 30 days. And how much is that? 105 kilowatt hour. Right? And you know that kilowatt hour is the commercial unit of electricity. So basically, it's 105 units. So this is the total amount of energy in the month. And to find the monthly bill, simple, just multiply it by the rate, which is 5. So the bill is going to be 105 into 5 rupee per unit. So that's 525 rupees for the month. That's our total bill. So let's take a look. How did we find it out? We found the total energy consumed by the fan bulbs and fans using the power formula. And we work that out in watt hour and remember to convert to kilowatt hour. Why? Because the billing is based on kilowatt hour, right? The unit means it's basically kilowatt hour. And this was the energy consumed in one day. So we multiplied it by 30 days and we found the total number of units used in the month since we're interested in the monthly expenditure. And so if you multiply that by 5, you get the total bill. So that's pretty simple, right? I hope you found this video on electricity questions useful. So do remember to like, comment and share out this video. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button right now. Remember to click on the notification bell to get notified about new videos. You can check my Facebook page and do check out my website for more videos and questions for you to practice. I'll put the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.